Last night was an EP launch for Mim's second compilation that they put out. So it's like a predominantly Nottingham based compilation where essentially it just kind of spans the music that Mim, well, I guess it's the kind of the music that Nathaniel loves, right? Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it kind of crosses many genres. But yeah, the EP launch last night was at the Mim shop. It was live streamed. All our friends were there. So. I guess it was grime. That was kind of like the first type of music that I really got into. People like Military Crew, Shots Movements, um, Vendetta Squad, um, NG Cartel, and Stan, like Boy Wonder by Stan, the yeah. mixtape. And that was like a mixtape that came out when we was in school. All of the production on it was one of our friends called Ninja. He was making, essentially he was making dubstep. Yeah. Bef before we even really knew what it was. Kind of how a lot of people started making dubstep. Absolutely, yeah. man. It was like a continuation of the grime stuff that he was making. But like in his house, he had these like massive speakers, and like you'd go in and like you close the door, and you're there for hours. <laughs> and like it was literally like I think that was like my first taste of like bass. Yeah, really. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I always loved the music, but in terms of like the low frequency aspect of it, like you, when you go into that room, it was like a chamber. It's the space that you hear it in, do you know what I mean, in the atmosphere. From there, when we started going out um, to clubs and, and raving or whatever, there was a lot of sound system at, at the time, a lot of sound system music. Yeah. That's kind of like where we really appreciated what that what dubstep was, what the kind of music was, and um, the nights at the time, so like the early Wigflex nights, mm. um, Rubber Dub nights, uh, Mist, yes. Ma Marcus Garvey, and then latterly Nate started doing the Mim nights. Yeah. It was just amazing to be in those spaces and feel the music, how it's meant to be. Yeah. And like you referenced there, like when you tell people who aren't necessarily into that sort of music about it and they listen on their phone or whatever, they're not, they're not getting it properly, so yeah. yeah, those nights are really important to us. Yeah, so it's a similar story in terms of like how I met Nate, I'd just go and buy t-shirts, like I, I loved what he was stocking, and then from there like the, the events kind of ran from it, and, and then yeah, we, we kind of started the collective and mm. um, I think what was great about the Mim Collective was we'd all been, everyone who was from Nottingham, who was part of the collective, had been going out to the nights I mentioned before. And we'd all sort of grown up together, um, just sort of seeing each other out and about. And then as we were you know, going into our 20s, people were starting to have more creative ideas of wanting to come together and do things. So it was a nice hub for us all to definitely come together and like, swap ideas, whether it was like musicians, mm -hmm. Or like you know, people doing film and media, um, the artwork, graffiti, and everything. It was just a nice space to collaborate. Um, so yeah, we was we was we was producing music together for like I don't know four or five years before. No, no, maybe a little bit less, like three to four years. And then we uh, collectively set up a record label as well called Cord Marauders with um, another set of producers. So that's like Geode, who's based in London, um, B9, who's based in Perth, Australia. And then um, a guy called Jay Fu, who's based in Canada, um, and we was all kind of making this um, like like similar music. Do you know what I mean? It was all like 140 based stuff, but it had a heavy influence of like jazz, soul, hip hop, and like yeah, just like the kind of music that we was really into. I've got some too. CD. This was our first album we did together, full album. It was called Tidal Fragments, and. Uh, sat on a bench there at Woodfort Park, which is North Nottingham, which is, uh, that's kind of where we're from. And then this is where we were living, um, in Cannon Circus, when we made the album. So, yeah, this was like, so we made most of this, what, 2012? Yeah, yeah, it would have been, yeah. Doing the first time. And like having like a full body of work where, where we kind of just like, we, it was quite meticulous with it, right? We yeah, were just like, yeah. right, let's get the track listing right, let's get everything right about it, do you know what I mean? 
So this one is uh, the Cup of Beef page, Spam Shop, which is Lucas Wigflex on there. The tagline for Wigflex is always um, Gloop, Wobble, Click, and that kind of sums up what this record is. Rude Boy Techno. Yeah, Rude Boy Techno. Um, it's just nice to have Lucas and Nathaniel work together because they're both, you know, big, big people in our journey, aren't they? Massive musically, people. so yeah, it's a great record. Why don't you check that out? This is like genuinely one of my favourite songs ever, and it was produced by Gio and Spam Shop. Um, Spam Shop being Lucas from Wigflex. Um, Birkin Soul was a label run by Gio, and this particular song, Cave Rave, I think I play it probably every single set that I play. Yeah, we've been playing it for like eight when years straight. It, when did it come out? Yeah. I think it was 2000, 2009. 2009, yeah. yeah. So this is 10 years old now. Um, so yeah, this this particular record for, for us, I'd say, in it is like, yeah, yeah, very important. Cave Rave. Going off the back of that, I may as well stick with that sort of genre wise. And like that time in Nottingham. Birkin Soul, with Bex and Blunt and Robots kind of summed up Nottingham's approach to like the sort of, if you want to call it post dubstep mm. scene like and then this Blunt and Robots one which is Brack, it was run by Brackles and Short Stuff and Short Stuff who's now Mickey Pierce um, yeah designed by with Bex for Lucas again so it's interesting to see all the sort of cross collaborations in that time Sick as old as well yes. So Future Bubblers, um, actually it was through Mim, the original link. So I, uh, I came in to do a video for Future Bubblers when they were picking Nottingham as the first city, I think. Yeah. And then from there we just applied for that. Mm. Um, it's always nice to just, just be in a collective like that where you, you get to mix up with people and share their experience. Because when you're doing it by yourself, you might stop feeling and certain way or whatever, but when you realise that everyone's, you know, kind going through the same, same thing, the same boat, whether it's music or film or what, art or whatever, it's all the same struggles, so um, it's nice to just work together, be open-minded, mm. and yeah, I think when you collaborate, it pushes you out of your own comfort zone a bit yeah. as well, so you come up with more interesting stuff.